All right, guys, I'm going to talk about the uh, bug lab first. So I'm going to go through a, a, a fake example. All right, so just a reminder, this is on your formula sheet. I'll start myself. Uh-oh. This is, this is the process, guys. This is behind the curtain. All right, so chi squared, that's how the formula is going to be on the AP test. So when you look at that, though, it'll tell you what each individual term to add up looks like. You do your observed, minus expected, square it, divide by your expected, add them all up. Add, that means add them all up. And that will give you this chart. Nice thing is, you know it's going to be 99% or 95% confidence. And remember that this top part is 95. This one's 99. For your lab, you can be 95%. 99 is mostly drug trials and such because, well, you don't want, would you rather someone say, hey, there's a 95% chance you'll be all right, or they actually do four, which is 99.7, or there's a 99.7% chance you're all right. I'll take the 99.7, please. So I'm going to set the chart. I don't always set the chart. And actually, if you're in AP stats, you can plug this right in your calculator because you know how to do it that way. So by all means, that's allowed now that you're using the graphing. If you're not AP stats, maybe next year you can learn to plug in your calculator. So our chart looks like observed and expected. And then remember, we subtract them. And then we subtract them and square them. Now by all means, when you if you do it the chart way, could just you go right to observe minus expected squared if you wanted or do do however many steps you need to do for this to be effective but I'm going to teach you the longest way and then you can shorten it however you're comfortable with um, like if you do a bunch of these you can get to a point where you don't do the chart and you just plug it in and add them all together and that's fine too so let's say I ran a pill bug lab with wet versus dry and by the end, my average in wet was 7.2, and my average in dry was 2.8. Remember, you're using the average values at the end of your data, because they might have, you can't just use one data point. That won't give you the accurate. So I started with 10 of those buggers, and remember with chi-squared, you always assume there's no difference. And if there's no difference in preference, you'd expect five and five. Now, unless they give you a proportion, the only other chi-square tests you'll see on the AP test are genetic based. And remember the magic ratio of three to one or nine to, I never see the nine to three or three to one. That's dihydride cross, and then you'd assume that's true. It's like when we did the MNEMS. Remember, you had to use the percent times total to get expected? A lot of times, if you see these, they give you the expected, or they give you part of it, or they give you a chi squared. Sometimes they give you the chi squared value, and they ask you to make a conclusion. Okay? So for this one, my observed was 7.2 and 2.8. I should have grabbed the calculator. All right, phone. I hate using this calculator, but now's the time for you to be useful for once in my life. Good boy. So first I'm going to do subtract these. Observe minus expected. 2.2. All right. Then I'm going to square 2.2. And according to my calculations, 2.2 times 2.2 is 4.84. And then I'm going to divide it by my expected, which was 5. And I'm going to get 0.968. Now I'm 50% certain, I'm 100% sure that there will be a chi squared question on the test. If it's, it's, you're either going to have zero chi-squared questions or like two or three. That seems to be how they do it. Now I'm going to say, oh, no way. Eh, I got 2.2. Now remember, technically it's negative, but I never write it negative because I don't want to fall in that pitfall and get it wrong. You know what I mean? You can always just subtract the bigger number or the smaller number from the bigger number. It'll work 100% of the time. 
And that's 4.84, wildly enough. When I square it divided by 5, I get 0.968. And for chi squared value, for my actual chi squared value, I add these up now. Come here, you calculator. I don't feel like working. 1.936. That's actually pretty low. It is. All right. So, that's my chi squared value. Now, how do I draw a conclusion based on that value? I look around and I look off, I lean over and I look off someone else's paper and I see what they wrote. That's how I draw conclusions. No, maybe. I look at this chart, right? First things first, whoopsie. First things first, I have to find my degrees of freedom. Now, they don't tell you this anymore, but degrees of freedom is n minus one. How many different, not n minus one per se, but should say choices minus one. How many different things were we testing? How many different things on that one? Two. So two minus one is one. So for that one, my degrees of freedom is one. Well, I'm, I'm gonna be 95% confident, so I'm gonna use this one. So now, if my number is above, if it's above 3.84, I reject the null. The null being that there is no preference in which chamber they're in. Because the bigger the number, the further away you are from what you expected. If it's less, so no difference, I'm going to put no difference. If it's less than 3.84, I, for bio, I accept the null. And that would be, I say there is no difference. There's no, pre I cannot prove there's no difference. Oh, I mean, I cannot prove there is a difference. I cannot prove that they chose one or the other. So for this one, we got 1.9 something, right? So we would, our number is less than 3.8. So we would accept the null. Um, if you wrote fail to reject the null, they'd have to give you credit because that's technically what you're supposed to say. I accept the null. We cannot show a preference in where the bugs went or whatever whatever you're going to put. You know what I mean? We can't show. So again, this is what differentiates you guys from middle school science kids. Middle school science kids would look at that and be like, they prefer wet over dry. And you would have to say, we cannot definitively say that because it could have happened by chance. Like I bet you if you put them in blank containers, sometimes you get seven in one and three in the other. You know what I mean? So it's very hard to prove things in science, obviously. All right, so that's chi-squared. I'm actually going to 